As the foundation includes the design of combined footings, which is a system that transfers the loads of two columns through a single shared footing to the underlying soil. But how do you actually design a combined footing in a real life situation? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design completely from scratch a real life example of a combined footing. This is a pipe rack in an industrial plant. This kind of structures typically support pipes at different levels and uh, they are very long. So there are many supports like this one in the perpendicular direction. Typically, the distance between columns is about 10 feet and in the other direction could be something between 15 and 20 feet, whatever the distance is for the pipes to span. These kind of supports are called the bends. The bends typically are moment connections in this direction and braced frames in the perpendicular direction. So these kind of structures have axial loads and shear loads as well in both directions. In this case, we have a dead load, 20 kips axial, live load, 40 kips axial, wind, plus and minus 18. The horizontal loads are in the x direction, in the in-plane is 8 kips each column, and in the z direction, which is out of plane, is 12 kips each column. The allowable soybean pressure is 3500 PSF. Please note that two independent spread footings would be very close to each other. So an economical solution to this would be a combined footing. Since the loads are the same in both columns and the wind is a reversible load, the combined footing should be rectangular rather than trapezoidal. So now let's go to ASDIP Foundation to model this example. When you open ASDIP Foundation, you see the project manager. Here you can see the modules included in the package, spread footings, strap footings, combined footings, wall footings, pile caps, and piles analysis and design. In this case, I have already prepared an example of a combined footing. Double click on this node representing the calculation of the example. And this is the template of a combined footing design in ASDIP Foundation. Here I have already entered some information Let's go to the graph tab to see graphically what, uh, what we are doing. Basically, I have modeled a rectangular uh, combined footing where the column to column distance is 10 feet here. And then this edge distance is 1.5 feet, 1.5. So the total length is 13 feet. In the other direction is five feet. Of course, all these dimensions can change if necessary. We go to the columns tab. I have modeled steel columns on top of pedestals. The pedestals are two feet high. So the loads are placed on top of the pedestal. For example, the horizontal loads on top of the pedestal will create another overturning moment in addition to the regular loads. All this is considered in uh, the program. If we go to the loads tab, I have entered the loads given in the statement of the problem, which is dead load is 20 kips each column, live load is 40 kips each column, and then wind. For wind, we have 18 kips vertical downwards in, the, in one column, and 18 kips vertical negative, so uplift in the other column. Also, we have in plane shear, 8 kips each column, and out of plane shear also 8 kips each column. Then in the materials tab, I have entered information about the properties. And for the soil, the gross allowable soil bearing pressure, 3.5 KSF. With this information, let's go to the graph soil bearing tab at the right. Here we can sort by load combination. We click on controlling. The controlling load combination here is 0 0.6 dead plus 0 0.6 wind. With this configuration and geometry, the maximum bearing pressure is 3.3 KSF, one end of the footing, zero on the other end of the footing. So these are the bearing pressures are the corners. 3.3, 0.8, and the other end is zero and zero. 
So 3.3 is the maximum bearing pressure, which is less than the allowable bearing pressure of 3.5. So now that the footing size has been defined, we can focus on how to optimize the design. Let's go to the at a glance tab. Here we can see a summary of the results just in one screen. The footing thickness is controlled by shear. Here we can see that the one-way ratio is 0.99. It's very close to the border borderline. So let's increase a little bit the thickness of the footing to be safer. Let's say 20 instead of 18. And now the ratio is 0.91. So let's keep 20 inches thick instead of 18. Here in the longitudinal reinforcement, we can see that the bending ratio is 0.39. So there's a lot of room for improvement here. Let's go to the reinforcement tab. X rebars, so the longitudinal rebars. Instead of 12, number 6, let's say 8, number 6, even less, 7, number 6. So the ratio is 0 0.65, and the minimum steel area ratio is 0 0.86, which is okay. So let's, let's keep 7, number 6s also for the bottom to be consistent. So this longitudinal reinforcement is optimized now. Here in the footing, there's a deficiency here. has to do with the center zero bars for shrinkage and temperature. Let's go to the C bars. Let's provide also top rebars in C direction. We can see here the reinforcement and mid-span, number 4 at 12. Let's change that to number 6s to be consistent with the longitudinal reinforcement. And now the shrinkage is uh, 0.49. Now with these changes in reinforcement, now the ratio is still over for uh, shear. So let's go back to geometry, change it to 22 inches, 24 inches. Now it's 0.93, so it's okay now. We can see here that the bending ratio in the transverse uh, direction is very low, so this footing is very comfortable with that. But let's keep the number six rebars to be consistent. Since we increased the thickness of the footing, now we are over the allowable bearing pressure, 3.5 versus 3.6, which is probably acceptable. If not, we can increase the size of the footing a little bit to make it work better. Right now it's 3.6, very close to 3.5. Go to the condensed tab. This is a more detailed set of calculations. Here is the overturning calculations and the footing design. We go to the detail tab. It's a more detailed set of calculations, step by step, with exposed formulas, also with references to the ACI code for a more granular checking of your design. Finally, go to the graph tab, soil bearing tab. We discussed already the bearing pressures here. The program also generates the shear and moment diagrams in the longitudinal direction for this combined footing acting as a beam. Here in the column tab, the program generates interaction diagrams for both pedestals. And finally, in the construction tab, construction sketches in elevation and plan view with the reinforcement that you just designed. As you can see, it's very easy to design combined footings using as the foundation. We were able to complete and optimize the design in just a few minutes that otherwise could take much longer if we do it by hand. If you like the software, please visit the website www.zipsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.